Managing your components, designs and release production data with Altium Designer is a powerful new concept, but the heart of the best data management practices is the place where the data is stored and managed, which is the vault. The vault's much more than just another storage mechanism though. It's also a bridge between the design world and the other worlds beyond the design release, including fabrication, assembly, procurement, stuff like that. Design teams can choose to manage their data using Altium's vault technology, but there are a few different options for doing that, which I'll talk about a bit later. But they can tailor the experience to best suit their organizational structure, their products, and how they do collaboration, both internally and externally. But however the vault and data management options are configured, the data flows are the same, and understanding how the data flows is imperative for getting the most out of this technology. As far as the design side of the vault is concerned, we have to start with components. Schematic symbols are created using the schematic library editor, and those are released into the vault as managed symbols. And that means they have an item ID, a revision, and a lifecycle state which changes as the design evolves. So for example, we might want a symbol to go through an approval process before it can be used, which is excellent for making sure that symbols match documentation standards like IEEE 315. And in the same way, PCB components are created in the PCB library editor, and those are also released into the vault, given item and revision IDs, and also they progress through a managed lifecycle. It's important to mention that item IDs are normally automatically allocated, and they're always unique. Revision IDs are always automatically generated based on the revision scheme that's used. The generic nature of symbols and PCB components means they can be reused across a broad range of unified components. Unified components are created from component libraries, which marry the parametric or engineering data that describes the component's function and makes it unique with the symbol, its logical representation, and the PCB component or footprint, which ultimately drives its physical implementation on a printed circuit board. These unified components are also released into the vault, and these are what would be placed into a design. These items would normally be managed in the vault in a component management zone. And a, a critical aspect of managing components is managing their supply chain. So each part, for example, could be obtainable from more than one source, and there may even be drop-in equivalents from different manufacturers. So components should be augmented with part choices that provide this critical link and also up-to-date pricing and availability. Once those components exist in a vault, they can be placed in designs, which are projects that are also created in Altium Designer. First, the components are placed in the schematics, and the engineering change order, or ECO process, is used to transfer the design from the schematic to the PCB in the usual way. If the components are properly managed, there'll never be any problems for transferring them from schematic to PCB. If a new revision of a component is released, the design can be updated either manually or as a batch process with an ECO. Once the design project's complete, the PCB configuration manager is then used to define various output configurations, and these are used to basically define and configure what types of outputs will be generated, for example, BOMs, 3D PCB videos, assembly drawings, Gerber or ADB++ fabrication files, smart PDF documentation. Now these configurations can then be released into the vault as new items or new item revisions if you're re-releasing to an existing item. Not only are the outputs generated and released into the vault along with a design snapshot, but the release process ensures data integrity and validates the design. So for example, if the design rule check fails on the PCB or a component is missing a footprint, the release will not proceed. Configurations can also be used to release specific variants of the design into different items that ultimately would be used to manufacture different models of the product. As well as releasing a complete design and all its outputs into items in a vault, it's also possible to release individual schematic sheets, which become managed sheets, each with their own revision and lifecycle status. So this sheet can then be placed within numerous other designs as if it were a component. Because the design and managed sheets contain components placed from the vault, the links between the items are retained. This provides the where used capability, so users can explore items in the vault and browse to child items and also see where items have been used 
in others. The releases don't have to be into the same vault either. Altium designer users may connect to any number of vaults. Vaults can be managed and hosted as a service by Altium, installed as a satellite vault server within the user's firewall, or self-hosted and managed using the enterprise vault server. However it's been deployed, the vault is transparently accessed in Altium Designer. Because managed and cloud-hosted vaults are outside the firewall, it's possible to offer secure logins and restricted access to external collaborators, such as EMS providers, procurement professionals and board fabricators, organisations like that. Some of them may even be within the corporation but outside of the design team. If the vault is hosted within the company firewall, fabrication, procurement and assembly data can be published from the vault for external collaborators using, uh, using cloud hosted services such as S3, Box.net, FTP or even file transfer. So to close the loop, valuable information gathered from those external collaborators and operations management people can also be fed back into the system to drive lifecycle management design revisions and new product development. So to recap on vault deployment, there are managed vaults which are hosted and maintained by Altium and you access those through Altium Live. And included in that is the Altium vaults containing all the reference designs and managed components developed by the Altium content development teams in various parts of the world. There is also the concept of a satellite vault, and that is where the vault is actually hosted within the corporate firewall, within the, the user company's firewall. However, users log into it through their Altium Live login, so as far as the end user is concerned, it's a transparent thing, but the data is actually within the firewall, so it's not possible with a satellite vault to share data outside of your organization, other than using publishing capabilities. And the final way to deploy a vault is to use the Altium Enterprise Vault Server, which is the actual vault server software that you install on a server of your choice. Now that could be, again, within your corporate network, in your firewall, or you may choose to install the Enterprise Vault Server outside your network in the cloud on uh, hosting services such as Amazon EC2, for example. In that case, it is possible to set up user roles, groups and permissions so that your third party or external collaborators can access those aspects of the design items themselves directly to get, uh, to get the information they need to build your products.